Watchman. The Watchman. The Watchman. The Watchman. The Watchman. The Watchman. Good day and welcome one more time into the studio of Revival Time Radio for another edition of the Watchman Radio Program. The question I want to ask you today is, when you send your children to school uh, on a daily basis, uh, do you know what they are learning, what they are being taught, or, and uh, do you have any control over it? I want to show you a clip of what's coming to a school near you, what they are soon eventually going to start and force on you, what they're going to start to teach our children from a very, very, very tender and young age. Have a watch here. Public schools in Fairfax County, Virginia are preparing to include gender identity in its curriculum for grades 7 through 12. The family life education lessons will include teachings on heterosexual, homosexual, bisexual and transgender identity. Andrea Lafferty of Traditional Values Coalition joins us from our Washington bureau to talk more about this controversial subject. Andrea, thanks for joining us. It's great to be with you, thank you. First of all, tell us about this curriculum and the motivation behind it. Well, it's interesting. Um, the school board voted uh, earlier in May to add gender identity. It's not a part of the state law. It's not a part of the uh, state school board instruction, but they've decided to add it against the will of many of the parents. And so now what we're dealing with is a vote on the family life education. Now, while we're talking specifically about Fairfax, I think it's important for people to understand this is happening across the country. So I may talk about Virginia, but listen carefully for your own community. Wow. Well, how will this curriculum impact the students? Well, it's very interesting. Right now, what will happen is, starting in kindergarten, they'll talk to them about same-sex or gay marriage. Um, and the, ch the parents will not be able to opt out. The big, one of the big issues is, in Virginia, parents can opt their children out of certain parts of the, quote, family life education. And so now what they're doing is they're trying to move parts of it from FLE, family life education, to health which means the parents cannot opt their children out. And so we've been pouring over the regulations and the information to see exactly what's happening. But we are very, very concerned that they are doing it here in Fairfax County and perhaps other places without the parents' knowledge or consent. In eighth grade, they will be discussing, let me just say, Bill Clinton's activity along with oral and anal. Um, in eighth grade, and most people, and, that, and they've lowered it from ninth grade, or teaching fourth graders about the word incest. How far does that go? What What is the difference between sexual orientation and uh, sexual uh, and gender identity? Well, the difference between sexual orientation and gender identity is sexual orientation is who you have sex with and how you have sex. Gender identity is who you are, male, female, are you born male or female? Are you born nothing? And they want to break down those definitions so you're no longer male or female as God created us. You're one of 52, quote, genders or one of a hundred and something genders, depending on who you talk to. It is not clear and it is not a part of our normal cultural discussion. I don't even think it's a part of discussion in France or other European countries. Uh, it, it, it's just bizarre. And they, again, they want to force this on the kids in Fairfax County when in fact it's not a part of the SOLs or the required education. What's been the reaction from parents and what can parents do? Well, in Fairfax County, it was interesting because the night of the vote on gender identity, they, the police, they hired a special police force, security, they actually locked 200 parents out so they couldn't get in, um, even though there was standing room in the back. Parents need to be very engaged. Parents need to know what is going on in their local communities. Read anything that's passed. Find out what they're teaching your kids under the guise of health, under the guise of PE or social studies or biology or family life. Um, we're seeing just an onslaught. This thing is snowballing. And so we would just encourage you to protect your children and know what they're being taught. Has the Obama administration played any role in encouraging public schools to adopt this sort of curriculum? 
Well, that is another very good question. Actually, encourage isn't maybe the word. Um, blackmail or force. Here in Fairfax County, we were told that the Office of Civil Rights um, at Department of Education and Department of Justice would see to it that our federal tax dollars were pulled if, if gender identity wasn't added. What that means is those monies that are meant to help educate and provide for under um, poor children, children that may be going without meals, that funding would be taken. So here we hear all this outcry about Republicans are, you know, not looking out for kids when in fact, when the president and his allies want to push this, this gender identity agenda, they don't care about poor children. Andrea Lafferty, thank you so much for taking the time to talk with us today. We really appreciate you joining us. Thank you. Coming to a school near you. I mean, we may not see it in the UK right now, but it's happening in the USA, and eventually it's going to filter here in Europe. They're going to be teaching our children not that these things are wrong and that the Bible speaks against them and that God does not like these things they're not going to be teaching them that on the contrary they're going to be teaching them that these things are no okay uh, th that they are acceptable now if you teach your children these things from when they start to learn things from the age of three four five six they will grow up believing in their heart that these things are right. And even though at a, a later stage when we may bring the word of God to them and tell them that the word of God speaks against this, it's going to be hard for them to accept. So now we have to be teaching them what is right and what is wrong from our very homes. So the word of the Lord is coming to us today to tell us that his laws, his statutes, his commandments, we as parents, as Christians, as Christian parents, we have an obligation and, uh, uh, you know, to, to teach our children from home. This is where home, home Bible study, uh, home devotion comes in very handy. We have to sit them down and teach them about God. Teach them what God likes and teach them what God hates from the word of God. We now have to teach our children that the laws of God comes first. They are priority even to the laws of the land. The word of God tells us in Deuteronomy chapter 6 verses 6 to 7. It says, And these words which I command you today shall be in your heart. You shall teach them diligently to your children and shall talk of them when you sit in your house, when you walk by the way, when you lie down, and when you rise up. That's taken from the New King James Version. So these things, we have to be teaching our children. We have to be talking about them all the time. We have to drill it in their little minds, in their subconsciousness, to let them know that these things that they have been, that have been forced upon them, that have been forced upon the world in general, that they are wrong. They are an agenda from the enemy himself, from the devil himself. And we have to do this from this very young age, from a tender age. Don't think that they're too young to learn about certain things. Because if we, if we don't teach them what is right, the world is going to teach them what is wrong. So we don't want that to happen. So the word of the Lord is coming today to tell you, don't neglect your family time your family devotions, your family Bible study, more, now more than ever, you need to be having them on a regular basis, every day, every night. You have to be teaching your children what the Word of God says. 
in the same in the same time you'll be writing those laws in your own hearts refreshing yourselves about these things because we as we live among these things the more and more we hear them the more and more we see them we will start to get accustomed to them and that is a very dangerous thing a very dangerous position to be in when we start to get accustomed to the wrong doings to the wrong things that will be happening that are happening around us when we get accustomed we will start to think subconsciously that these things are okay and so we have to be constantly in the word reminding ourselves and teaching our children that these things are actually wrong that they are indeed wrong and against what God is teaching us and so don't neglect the time that we spend with our families teaching them the word of God it is very important and very vital for the time that we are living in we are living in the end times we are very close to the rapture of the bride of Christ we are very close to the coming of the Lord and we have to do what we have to do now before it is too late we don't have time to be fooling around to be playing around God loves us he loves this world as he says in John 3 16 he loves us so he is warning us he's sending out these words to put us on our guard and to tell us what we need to do now to stay close to him to stay within his will and his way and so as we receive these words, let them not fall on deaf ears, but let them find root within you and germinate and bring forth a hundredfold fruit. For those of you who are listening, you're not saved. You need Jesus today. The world is very dark, it's growing darker by the second. And we need Jesus to brighten up our lives, to brighten up our, our, our days, even our nights. He is the ultimate light and we as Christians, we are the light of the world. Whoever out there you're listening, you're not saved, you are not a light, but you're living in darkness. And we are telling you that you need to come over into the light before it is too late because that broad road that you're on that broad road that seems to look so good and flourishing and, and, and promising it will eventually lead you to certain destruction it will lead you to hell See, if you're out there, you know the Holy Spirit is convicting you, speaking to you. You know that God is real and you know that God loves you. He's telling you, come to him now before it is too late. Romans chapter 10 verse 13 says, For whoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. So it doesn't matter who you are, what you have done. This opportunity is open to you. It is a free gift from God himself. Jesus Christ, he died, he paid the price for this free gift that we are offering to you today salvation just accept him as your lord and savior before it's too late first john 1 9 tells us if we if we confess our sins that he is indeed faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all our unrighteousness so yes he will answer when you ask it's not an if it's not maybe it is his will that every man should come to heaven with him. It is not his will or wish for any man to perish, but that all should have eternal life with him in bliss in heaven. So today, ask him to come into your heart. Ask him to save you and to cleanse you from all your unrighteousness. Just say this short prayer. Say, Lord Jesus, Please forgive me of my sins. 
I sincerely want to serve you today. I'm sorry for the wrongs that I've done to you. Wash me today with your blood and cleanse me from all my unrighteousness. I give you thanks for hearing and answering my prayer. Thank you for saving me. Amen. Hallelujah. So if you have done that, congratulations and welcome into the family of Christ. If you would like to contact me on Facebook for any reason at all, you can find me there by searching for Minister Curtis Roach or Curtis Minister Roach or the Watchman Radio Program. If you would like to ask me a question, whatever, leave me a message and I'll respond back to you at my earliest convenience. Uh, please follow me on uh, YouTube. You can subscribe to my YouTube channel, which is under my name, uh, Curtis Roach. You can also follow me on Twitter at Roach underscore Curtis. If you have made that bold step today and you have accepted Jesus Christ, I w- want to wish you congratulations. You're now on the right track. You're now heaven bound. So until next time, God wish you bless you and goodbye. Jesus comes.